you. Hey. We're in business. <laughs> okay, here's our agenda for this evening. Welcome everyone. And uh, as you know, our feature presentation tonight is we're going to talk about our favorite websites. We weren't sure how big a crowd would be turning out on the 2nd of September. It's a little early for a lot of people. And as you can see by the crowd, or the lack thereof, we were right. So uh, this is what we're up to. This will be our setup here. And depending on how time goes, we have a short presentation afterwards using the Upper Canada Land Petitions at the Library and Archives Canada. It's like a refresher. And here, first time attendees, welcome. And if, if you're interested, you can get up and do a quick advertising of some of the surnames you're researching and uh, locations, and we'll say hello. Is there anyone that would like to stand up? Guys, <laughs> <laughs> well, I stand up. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm a first time attendee and I'm a genealogist. I feel like this is a oh, no meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the surnames I'm searching are Smith. Smith. <laughs> which really isn't that bad. And Oakley. Oakley. And then the names that branch off from there. So, I've been doing it about, I guess, 10 years off and on. And what's your name? Smith. Oh, Paul Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I've got the Smith site actually back to Scotland in the mid 1700s, oh, and they went over to India for a while, and then they died there. But the kids came back to England. So, well, one came to England, one came back to Scotland. So I've got them. My mother's side is mainly around Middlesex and Suffolk, and uh, <coughs> so I've been working with both those sides. It's interesting. Various little mysteries that crop up. And things you can find is amazing nowadays online. It really is. But That's unfortunately, it's not all there. <laughs> no, it's not. No. It's, <laughs> well, you get the extra things that are it. there, which is really nice. That's the, the thing. Well, welcome. And if you want to sign up, John has a sheet at the back there, and he'll take your name and email and names you're researching in case we ever. Get anyone else that's working on that? The Smith family. Yeah, the Smith family. <laughs> How many here have Smiths? <laughs> I got all the three lines of Smiths. So. Uh, everybody's in Durham? Is there a region here? The Smiths? They came oh, no. From the, the only people that came from England to here is my mom and dad. Everybody else is in England, in Australia. Okay, so. A little bit of news from OGS. Wow. Uh, some of the Vernon's directories are now available online. My understanding is it was the bees that were up there, and that was a little while ago, so it may have been maybe improved since then. Do you mean names that start with B? Uh, no, actually cities that start <laughs> oh, okay. with B, like Belleville and... There were the A's? That I don't know. <laughs> okay. All I know something about bees. But if you want to know more, yes. Look on the OGS website, ogs.on.ca, and uh, they are built, they have a link on their website to them, and as well you can get to them through the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints website as well, which is familysearch.org. In October, we are going to have our day of learning. Saturday, October 19th, we have three speakers, J Jane McNamara, Cher Latouz, and Tammy tipler Priolo. And the talk will be concerning finding UEL's ancestors, then what? Dethorning interviews, cold calls, and first contact. Oh, we have, and we have some bookmarks if you can't remember all this. If you don't want to take notes, take a bookmark. <laughs> Records of Migration and Settlement at the Archives of Canada. And way beyond the guidebook, planning a genealogy trip to the UK. It's $35 and it includes lunch for anyone registered by October 9th. As you can see, it starts at 9 a.m. and we should be done and out of there by four. So we encourage everyone to uh, sign up for it if you're interested in those topics. There's the bookmarks there. 
And where is it? Oh, sorry, it will be held. Uh, did you give an address there? It's probably at the bottom. Okay, it is there, yes. Faith United Church, 1778 Nash Road in Curtis. It's easy to get to, there's lots of free parking. It's a good sized building. We have lots of room in the auditorium, or I guess it's the actual church part. It's a, it's a multi purpose setup. And uh, coming from the 401, there may be a little bit of fun with some of the uh, construction going on, yeah. but overall, it, it's generally a, an excellent it's place to be. Two it's a little bit. Oh, it's cut off, is it? Uh huh. The bottom uh, half. Turn it up. Yeah, it's probably on the book yes, yes. No, it's cut off. It's fine on my screen, but you guys are a little bit sorry. I did, I did not catch that, sorry. But yeah, 1778 Nash Road. But it should be on here probably two minutes. Yes, the address is on the bookmark, so grab a bookmark. I'll have to keep an eye on those. And now, it's on the we website will, too, right? It should be on our website yeah, as well, yes. Yeah. Durham.ogs.on.ca, yes. Okay, now for the main program, your favorite websites. And starting us off will be Sheila, oh, who's going to talk about Irish Heritage Quebec and the Lost Directory. Uh -huh. So... Irish Heritage Quebec dot net. So this is one of my favorite. Uh, I have a lot of uh, Quebec, Ireland, Ireland, Quebec, and Montreal uh, ancestors. So um, you, when you get into this page. I go to the genealogy, but there is a lot of other links, local history about Quebec, and uh, they have PowerPoints, sometimes they give um, presentations at their hall, and then they'll put the PowerPoint on so that you can, because we often can't get to Quebec to listen to it. But um, if I go to genealogy, <coughs> And so, I mean, there's a whole, a whole page, if I can go all the way down, you can see all of the green are all websites that he's attached, <laughs> attached there, anyways. Uh, so, if you, so if you go to the first one, the, the, the census of 18, eight, uh, 18, so I don't, I haven't really found that. Um, very many places, but say I put a hern in there, that's one of my names, and it comes up, and then you click on the image, and it goes right to the old parish record. Nice. So, um, that's for Quebec City? Quebec City, okay. yeah. Um, for the Notre Dame Parish, which is the only parish that was there in 1818 for, for uh, Roman Catholic and uh, I mean they have uh, 31, 42 now some of these are on Library and Archives Canada and it will take you when you click on it, it takes you right to Library and Archives Canada so it you know makes it uh, very easy um, then after uh, the Irish built their first Church St. Patrick's, they have all of the records. So from 18, oh, 1877, all the way to 1916. So you can, you know, you just click on any one. Um, if you go, it's got this one's got from January to June, and then it goes right into all the. All the priests' records, the baptisms, the marriages, and the deaths. This is independent of the Troy and or Druid collection. Sorry, the, the other collection. That well, you know, yeah, but like yeah, that. you can. I mean, you here you have to go through each record. Okay. Whereas in the Druid, if you try and 
um, put, the, put your name in. If it's not indexed properly, right. you'll never find it. So in this, if you have an idea of the years, you can just go through. And uh, I mean, I've been through lots of years. <laughs> <laughs> are, these, are these in English or French? Oh, some of them are in French. But um, I wondered, being Irish, whether they would be. Yeah, but it's the priests. The priests, the priests French, who are writing the, yeah. the the baptism and things like that, yeah. But not Latin. Not really, although <laughs> you know, there's probably a word here or there, like yes. you find, like you find on the Irish ones too. Um, and they have, uh, yeah, there, there's some more in back in Notre Dame, uh, pre 1856. Uh, different parishes around Quebec and access to non-Catholic records in Quebec. So if you click on that, it brings you to Family Search, but right in the right area where you need to be. So that's so helpful. Um, St. Patrick Cemetery, uh, if you click on Find a Grave, brings you right to the, the cemetery. And right now there's 41% photographed. I haven't found anybody there. Um, more cemeteries in uh, uh, different areas of Quebec. Um, and this North America, if you click on that, it again takes you to Family Search. But you know how when you have to click on the map and try and find which records you're look, looking for, this brings you right to Quebec. And then you can, you can go through each. Um, children that were orphaned. So these are the Irish children that came came over in the <coughs> potato famine. Um, I mean, and there's a few websites there that I haven't really even gotten into. And then it's got all the um, newspapers that are in the bank, the uh, Bibliothèque and Archives of Quebec. And some notary records and the Quebec City directories. So this is, I mean, you know, everybody loves it. You were talking about the Vernon directories. This is the Quebec one. It's the same, the same way you go in and um, you can find the, the names of the streets or go the other way and do the alphabet. Um, and they have them, they have the Montreal one here too. But they have fire insurance maps, heritage buildings, um, re book of reference for the cadastral lots in Quebec City, and um, there's the Montreal Cemetery. So that that's uh, a good link, and the Montreal Directory. So the Montreal Directory is also one of my favorite ones. Uh, the ship the ships lists from Ireland to Canada. And if you click on that, it brings you to the oops, uh, oh, Library and Archives Canada. And, um, and, and then it gets down to Ireland, where you can click on the Irish Catholic par Parish Registers, the Censuses in Ireland. And Irish genealogy, and everything is free, so I really like it for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Are we going to be able to get these websites somewhere? Are we? I'm taking notes, but uh, the, you mean the Irish? Uh, well, anybody who gets yeah. their t their websites yeah. tonight, yeah. how right. are we going to? Keep track of Are they written down on the sheet, or is it just the name? Irish on Heritage the sheet? Quebec is written there, but yeah. I mean it's Irish Heritage Quebec .net, so yeah. um, I can add the dot .net at after. And maybe then, maybe yeah. at the break, people could make sure they've written the URL after that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that then we could put that on the website. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. A bit about Quebec, and now we're going to jump into the newspaperarchives.com with Andy Long.
Okay. So I should go back to the beginning, first first page. Okay. Newspaperarchives.com is a website where you are supposed to have a subscription, but I don't have one. And I find it useful anyway. I mean, I'm sure it would be more useful if I had a subscription. But even without a subscription, there's a, a lot of interesting things that you can do. Or what some people do when they have a lot of websites and they don't want to be subscribing to them all, is you can go in with this website and find out if you've got interest, um, things of interest, make a list, Okay, and then maybe get a short subscription sometime and then do all your research at once, once you So, um, now, th this is, they just assume that people are going to be doing genealogy uh, when they're doing this, but really, it's a list, of, it's a website of newspapers. So everything you find in here is uh, newspaper issues, and they, their collection seems to be mainly Western U U.S. and Canada. So uh, there, there's a lot of uh, Canadian newspapers from um, Manitoba and Saskatchewan and Alberta, for instance, and then uh, northern and middle states, things that seems to be, maybe that's where they just started and we're working their way out from there, I don't know. So, so I've got, I put Dan DeLong here, my husband here, so I'm just going to press enter. And it found uh, probably too many records but <laughs> um, to be looking through today. But uh, you'll notice that down, down the side, you can narrow your results. And it says 32 of these are in Canada. There's 14 in Australia. So you can also narrow your dates by clicking on a decade. So if you've got a, a certain time period when you know maybe your relatives were out there and they might have had something written about them. so. You can see it goes back to the 1920s. So, so this isn't for like pioneer research. Uh, there's also the other thing here, it says revise search. So this is the advanced search. So you can put in uh, a, an exact phrase that you want or something with all of these words. So if I put obituary, hmm. <laughs> See if I find any obituaries. Okay, so it's still found a lot of uh, records. That <laughs> okay, so these aren't all obituaries you can see. Uh, but anyway, I'll just pick one. Uh, oh, here's a guy that was diagnosed with a disease. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like if you, when you want to go and look at a record. Let's see? Not going to go now. They had Lou Gehrig's disease. Oh, it's not that old. That's why. You have to double check that one. I'm sorry, I have no idea why this isn't working. Since it worked the first two things I clicked on. So I can't show is, you that. Is it because you? No, it isn't. It, 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 uh, cause I do this all the time. <laughs> okay, well I'll just have to tell you uh, that when you go to the page, and I don't know, maybe, maybe the connection isn't fast enough or something for the, to show the big images, it shows you the entire image of the newspaper page. But if you don't have a subscription, it's fuzzy. You can only read the headlines. But down below, um, people have gone through and they've said, and here are the names that are on this page. And then down below that, it says optically character read, and it shows you the optical character read. But it's, a lot of it's machine optical character reading, not very good. Um, and sometimes if it's skinny columns, it's really weird to read. Okay, but you can usually tell what's going on, and, uh, and, and then you can, um, um, it, you can tell whether that's of interest or not. So um, often the whole article is just very easy to read. It just depends on the particular newspaper and how they've done their optically character reading. And I have no idea why this isn't going in. But so if you did get a subscription because you know what you want to look at more, then, then you would you would be, have all the newspaper pages and you can zoom in on them very close, you know, and read them. 
Okay, and then it also lets you save them. It, like if you if you have a subscription, you have an account, and then you can save the pages that you're interested in on a list. That's what they call your treasure box, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now that show obituaries is clicked to off at the moment. Would, if you click that on, would that help? Do you think? Or? Um. I don't well, think so. But we'll see. We tried something. Uh, I'm sorry, can't explain it. Uh, it, 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 uh, it does let you see the pages. It just lets you see them fuzzy, and I don't know what the problem is. It's always because I am here trying to show people. Yeah. <laughs> it says, Firefox prevented this site from opening two pop-up windows. Maybe they were the... Options and say, options and say, allow... Hey, that was it. Know. Okay, Firefox decided I didn't need to see that page. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Okay, so you can see, um, like a lot of sites here, um, I, I could click in closer, but it doesn't help um, that very much. Okay, so, but I can read this stuff down here, and, uh, and, and I can use, the, uh, you know, my usual thing. I'll look for the word DeLong. And it shows you, you can search through it. But you can see it's not a very good uh, translation. You would not want to rely on that for proving your UEL, you know. <laughs> anyway, so, so even though you can't, the, the stuff is fuzzy on the page, even without a subscription, you can do a lot of research. And then if the, there's a, enough interest in something that you do want to get a subscription to it, then you would. And if you you don't waste your money getting a subscription to find out there's nothing you want. Okay. I use this all the time, but I don't use it so, as much for genealogy as I do for Wikipedia. Because, you know, I'm a Wikipedia editor, and um, I'm always looking up newspaper references for... Uh, topics, local histories, or things like that, and information. So I, I don't use it just for genealogy. I use, use it for other types of things. Oh, and you can also buy the entire uh, page if you really want to. It's much better than going to the archive and tearing the page out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, I'm done. What was the site in? Newspaperarchive.com. It's all, just all one word with, with no capitals or anything. Okay, so I'll, I'll just close that one so you don't have too many tabs open here. Okay, thank you, Anne. And now Stacy is has a couple of web states, web states, websites to talk about. One's broadcastinghistory.ca I'm just going to bring it up on my computer just for reference but I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm, there's a couple here that I'm sort of um, they're not as uh, much of general interest but I use this this broadcasting one a lot because I googled my dad and I found my dad's name in, in uh, Google three times because he was a broadcaster, and that took me to this site, which is um, Canadian dash broadcasting dash history .ca. But what I found out when I went into my own—I have this in my OneNote—I um, uh, discovered that the, the danger with websites is that they change. <laughs> so you you take note of them, and then you find out that what they told me. Um, oh, they're telling me it's not secure, um, and they're also telling me, am I not in this? Yeah, oh, I think I'll go one more. Anyway, basically what, what it said was that they, the site is still there, but they've archived a whole lot of names. It's not that you can just click on them willy-nilly. So I, you know, I guess they did their homework. They, a bunch of guys got together. I think some of them were my dad's bosses that he didn't like. So he tells me what the real story was sometimes. But just, just to be on the, you know, I don't know how many of you would use that 
that site broadcast history. I found it very interesting because radio today is so different. <laughs> and um, some of the stations he worked for, don't even, they don't exist anymore. Um, and then the next one I went to, I don't know how many of you use, what, what is it, what did I write there? Ontario plaques. Um, so if you, if you ever had the problem of, you know, you had a father like mine who wouldn't stop the car, <laughs> um, you can just go on now and um, uh, put in Ontario, I, well, maybe we could put that one. You can put that one there and people can see. Um, Forbidden. Forbidden. <laughs> Forbidden. Okay. Dot. Oh, maybe there's no dot. Maybe there's no dot in the, the, yeah. the first dot is not there. And my, my story with this one is that, apart from me, that, you know, somebody who didn't stop the car, um, <laughs> you uh, find that when I started looking at these, they were they were done by a, a different guy and they yeah now Alan Brown is doing them uh, and he mentions at the bottom that it used to be anyway that's how I mean you don't need to stop the car <laughs> because they're they're and they're um, and they mention something out there here's our flap of the day connection um, and it just this again it's not genealogy but it it goes with your research right for instance my grandfather was born in Tyrone and at that was the time I, I did get out of the car there's a plaque there that says that that was the McLaughlin's they started in Tyrone they were manufacturers of axe handles or something I thought that was very actually there's a vehicle there yeah in the, in the big case but this one is yeah this is this is not the plaque of the day because it was the plaque of the day when I looked this up a few days ago but anyway explains the whole history of when this town was founded and then he he goes on to say that you know the, the guy that started this isn't doing it anymore but anyway I, I find it very very useful but again um, that idea that, that websites change um, and then what else did I put down there Oh, this one. This one is kind of interesting. <laughs> are, are you going to another one? I think so. Oh, can you can you can you answer a question? Yes. Okay. You said the man who started it is no longer uh, maintaining it. But if there's a plaque of the day, would someone like is that being updated as well, the that's, plaques come? That's what I don't know. There are the 141 fine people who photographed them. Where is he? Wayne Cook, yes. Wayne Cook. He, I, I don't know. I guess you can click on his website too. But I, if he's not involved anymore, um, I'm not sure. As I say, that website is it, maybe because it was a long weekend or something. I don't know. We can click. We can we can call them on that. Um, and they're also saying that the Toronto plaques are on a different site. And I don't know if there's enough cities that uh, you know. Um, so yeah. So yeah, if you want to know who, you know, Eugenio Neo photograph and you just click on his name, apparently you'll find it. But um, I just, I just find that um, something that I go, I, I like things that go with my, my research. Um, this other one I found out because of my Kefir ancestors. And um, it's called uh, Skeleton. Skeleton genealogy, yeah, skeletongen.com slash genealogy. Um, they don't seem to be updating it, but they've got um, history, they've got some of your families, I'm sure, here. Um, hmm. Is skeleton spelled great? Right? I thought that was spelled the yeah, L. Yeah, you got this one L, I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see just if I can add it to my yeah. other. Um, I'll try taking genealogy. Let me see. It's. Okay, I, I took the word genealogy off of it. Okay, okay. Okay, so maybe if, maybe it's got a link to the genealogy. Yeah, it, it yes, it does. And again, it's it's uh, it hasn't been updated. I'm surprised to see. Do you want to try a different cable? Five years. I don't know. What's but, wrong? What was it? 
But if it's you not, like not can, here. No. no, no, it's no. the, it's the uh, but there's a there's a lot of us keppers. I've I've been to one graveyard that I'm, I'm related to them all. <laughs> I can get another cable ready if you want. So if you this is just an interesting site because you can link up to some families, not just the keppers, a whole handful of them. And they're looking for breaking down their brick walls too. But then when I found out it hasn't been updated for a few years, I'm I'm not sure if anybody's still home. But it took me to um, it took me to Pinterest, and that was one of the places where um, Josh, the, the genealogist from TV, Josh uh, Taylor, Dan's getting he, another cable. Just because the, the, the famous Kepper, the one that walked back from Vaughn to Pennsylvania to get a pastor twice, um, he, he's the whole story about is down there. And um, the, um, yeah, so. I want, to, I want to give you something that makes this site useful. Um, Doesn't want to come out of the closet today. <laughs> okay, well, you have other stuff to talk about, so if I figure this out on my own laptop, I'll, I'll um, you know. Bring it back up. Yeah. Could, uh, I just uh, say something um, about websites that disappear or get changed. Um, there's a site called the Wayback Machine. I mean, you've heard of that. Yes. And, and if you have a good uh, URL, that's a web page. It doesn't work for database searches, but or web, if it's a web page and you're afraid it might disappear, you can go to the Wayback Machine, put that URL in and say, archive this for me. And it'll save it as it was on that date. And then it'll just keep it. So even if the website changes, you can always find what it looked like on that date again. So, yes. There you go. Did you find one? I guess maybe it's oh. just slow. Yeah. Like yeah. now it'll try and change twenty different times because it's tap on the same. This was into your HTML. Probably a bandwidth issue. Could be. I wanted to get from that to the Pinterest because well, Pinterest is right here, so there is a link. Okay. I can see it right on the page. And it, okay. I'm gonna try it. Click on that, and you will see. Oh. Yeah. So see it when we get it hooked up again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. But a lot of things, I was amazed. I've tried it before, but I like this way of going into it better. Um, it's probably it's As I say, I don't want to. I don't want to be dealing with you know cookies to bake for your ancestors or something. I just want to. This stuff mostly seem relevant. I just clicked on a few, but that's your USB power off the side. If you got a USB to plug that into. No. No USBs. Is it coming up on your laptop? Yes, it's got it on the laptop. It is the one on the other side. No, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, actually, uh, that's what I should do. I've got a computer with a USB oh, yeah. that will power it. It's actually working, though. Yeah. 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 Y
Steve's. But it's back it. here again, but it is it too. Now mine is looking and looking at the There it's back again. Strange. Oh, and it has a, it has a, it has reference to British home children here. Um, Further down? And it's not sort of interesting. It's before you got to this, it's on the page with the first book. Oh, yeah, okay, I've, I've got it coming up now. British home children, surnames, yeah. heritage, Métis. Yeah. It was Germany. Yeah. Traditional foods, old photographs, heritage France, heraldry, China. And log yeah. in to see more. And mostly they, they seem to be, they want to, you know, talk to other people about it. It's supposed to be collaborative, but I'm just a little bit concerned with the dates. So, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of. Uh, it maybe doesn't update as often as. No, the blog is out of date. Um, so that, yeah. Something tricky. Okay. Anyway. Hopefully you have better luck at home with, with the strong we can borrow your computer. Okay, it was, it was hanging yeah. down. It was, I think it was pulling on the yeah. table. Was this a Yes, you do that. Oh, uh, yeah, never mind that. Never mind that. Okay. <laughs> and, oh, that's a chat thing, is it? This is definitely eclectic. One of the things you can click on is the, the Montreal Shamrocks, which is what a hockey team. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what are you looking for? You got me on this. <laughs> I guess I'm up next. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, but that's Stacy. Exactly. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, a little bit of technical problems there. Okay, now somewhere where again Anne is my oh your drive my drive. Mm. Uh, oh your drive. Oh, that's oh. the. <laughs> there, oh, well, that's, that's not what you that's want. That's not the one I want, no. I minimized it. I guess that wasn't a good idea. Oh. No. That's it's the other one. Where is that material? Okay, let me find it. Sure. Okay, so I'll just go to any old thing here. No, oh, that didn't work. It's a PowerPoint. It's a PowerPoint. But you, you haven't had it open yet? Not the part I need to know. I don't think so. Well, that's... I have to go to my computer then. Where, where's the... Uh, oh, showing all the drives. There you go. It, well, you had it set up for the drives at one point there. I, I, did, but I did on here. Uh, just right here. USB. Yep. That looks like it. September meeting. No. Nope. Oh yes, yeah, I put them all in the same. Favorite folder. websites? Yep. There yes. you go. Thank you. I forgot I put them all in the folder. Make it easier. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Sorry, it must have got closed. Yeah. Might want to maximize that too. No, it doesn't oh, work. Oh, no, it doesn't work? Well, it's maximized anyway. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry. Okay, we're good? Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm going to, recently I've been working in Buckinghamshire, England, and I've found quite a few websites, there they go, <laughs> it's back, or coming I'm back here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that have been very helpful to me, so I thought I'd give you a quick <coughs> showing on some of them, just standing there like that, you got it. Click <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> uh -oh. like okay here. Okay. And we're back. Oh, yeah. Find it again? Oh, my goodness. Do you want to try a different computer? Shrink that one and it should be there. Yeah, it's maybe we can hear it. Oh, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Say next. Next. Oh, you want to send me a report? Apologize for the uh, oh my goodness. software problems here. There we are. There. Okay. Try again. Here we go. So again, Buckinghamshire, Paris records, land records, 
wills extracts, wills, and local websites. These are just some of the things that have found that have been very useful this summer. And very expensive when you buy the wills. <laughs> Parish registers. We all know about these, so I'm not going to dwell on this. Uh, they're for Buckinghamshire, they're available through your local LDS uh, Family History Center. You use their catalog link and you can pull up quite often both the bishop's transcripts and the parish registers, sometimes just one of them. And the odd time neither one is there. But as a rule, it, they usually have at least one of them. Um, you can use uh, familysearch.org, that's their website. You do have to register, but it's free. But to get the Buckinghamshire, you do have to go into the, one of their family history centers. Okay, land record extracts. The uh, address is there, it will be at the end as well. They have two ways to search. They've got just a general search where you can type in a name. So if you have a nice odd name like Belcher, B-E-L-C-H-E-R, you can just type it in. Or if you want, just put in Belch, B-E-L-C-H, and an asterisk, it will find the rest of it and anything else, else after that. I am back here. Oh, now let's go back just for a second. Okay, two plate ways to do it. A simple search, just type in a name, or there is an advanced search where you can put in several words, you can pick a date range, you can do a couple other things on it. So two different ways to search through there. And I just thought I'd put a few examples up here because just to show how wonderful this stuff can be. And I don't know how to pronounce Fiofman, but I'm gonna call it Fiofman. And uh, it didn't like my pronunciation, so. Walk through it and um, forget the slide. <laughs> easier said than done, <laughs> but I will try. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Fiofman there has to do with different bits with the land records and you can start in the 1400s and go up well right into the 1900s I believe but I generally was looking in uh, 1500 to 1700 range and I got uh, marriage settlements so I was able to pick up maiden names for some of my uh, ancestors and or their, their, their relatives the, this was in the archives this this is, was in the um, Website. Buckinghamshire list, which that was, I think, on the archives of County Council, Buckinghamshire. And that was through families. No, that's no, it's it's their own to. web their own website. Um, I did have the thing on top, and I do have the addresses at the end of the presentation too. But but um, I wrote it down. No, I'm just <laughs> okay, yeah, if you want for that one, sure. Okay. Um, it'll be the HTTP colon two forward slashes archives dot don't go slower, excuse No, I, I'm I don't have anything to do with Buckinghamshire unless you tell me that this applies to every oh, other. Oh, well, it, 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 this one was specifically for Buckinghamshire, but I know Northamptonshire has something very similar. It just runs slower. <laughs> Buckinghamshire is a little nicer, but it, things like marriage settlements. So you get the uh, somebody offering land or whatever as part of the dowry for the daughter and things like that, or even sometimes I think it comes from the male, the husband's side, to show that he can provide for uh, the wife. And so you get the maiden name of the wife. If you haven't found them in a marriage record or anything, boom, and I, I got picked up whole ancestral line, well, two ancestral lines that way. But how did you get that site? Did you go through Jen Yuki and just work? Um, I think I was just actually Googling things. Yeah, so I think that one, yeah. I had gone, it is connected with the wills, which somebody had told me about the wills when I got another part. But, uh, and the wills come through the same places that, that they are connected to the the Bucks archives and, and uh, oh. it's a Buckinghamshire County Council I believe is the main website we'll call it and then you can get the wills off of it there's also the the and um, 
those land records are on there, which is part of the archives, as we said. Then if you go to the Family History Society for Buckinghamshire, they have someone who actually went through a lot of the wills, especially, I'm going to say 1600s, 1700s, and extracted the names from them. I have a nice page on here <laughs> to show. Um, so, yeah, I'm just they, with the extracts, you make sure you get the right will. So it costs two pounds for the extract. And I, for instance, I ordered, first I ordered the Abraham. Okay, where, where's the slide with the ones you wanted to show? Oh, never mind. Yeah. It's just gone again. Um, yes, the uh, Abraham and Hooten. Well, I got like 15 pages of Hooten's and 17 pages of Abraham. And it's not just if it's their will, like not just the name at the top of the will. It's everybody mentioned in the will that the gentleman could read and pick out. So even if he was just a witness, you get his name on the page. But some of these are wonderful because, well, in, in the case of my uh, Mary Hooten, it come up as a will for a Mary Abram. Well, I didn't know she'd married a second time because the Ravenstone records are all missing for that time period. And when I got the original will, the gentleman who done the extracts had missed a second child from the second marriage. So she was actually not only a Hooten, she was a Stokes and then a neighbor when she died. And then it worked out really well. It, yes, so that you got the extract before you went? On that particular one I did. That's what started me off. This one was just uh, probably an hour after I was given those extracts, which come electronically, I had ordered the will, which came in about a week and a half. It was really quick for, for one will. Mm -hmm. uh, then I started ordering five at a time because it works out cheaper in the postage, and they took three weeks or so. Uh, yeah, broke it. <laughs> now this is all computer. Suggestion. If do you have your presentation on a stick? Yes, I do. Why not? I'm sure nobody's watching this online and they've, they've probably <laughs> run off screen. Why not switch to Dan's computer? Well, he's got one in his hand, maybe oh, he's thinking of Yeah, because this isn't just working. Oh, it's and if you use that sword. computer yeah. and, and use it it's as a projector. It's just crashing all over the place. Yeah, because, you know, I just downloaded made a nice presentation. presentation. Oh, so I'm going to see if it'll come up with the same software and it's using them. I'm just going to shut the computer off. Yeah. And on a side note, I have no idea why these people put this in here, but the history of the Montreal Shamrocks, extensive and hockey, like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> and the history of the net, uh, but you wouldn't look for that. I guess, again, it, that's where Google comes in handy. It would take you to us. Oh, and the Avro Arrow is in here. Just uh -huh. I'm going to come around and try this. It'll be the same software as it's using. I used this last month and it worked perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Well, same with everything we've tried. Oops. Yeah, the HDMI doesn't work on Dan's computer. The HDMI doesn't work. I do have a VGA on this computer. Why aren't we just using the VGA? Uh, because it was handy. This was also handy. <laughs> so, okay. <coughs> this is a touch screen as well. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. Hey, Dan. Well, well, she it, goes, it okay. doesn't survive it, very Maybe long, the port it? is bad. So it, it, it must be, you know, something like that. But look, this, we'll see how long this lasts. Yeah, that'll be <laughs> trial. Okay, we'll try again. This one was a fabulous uh, record. I, I must pronounce it as Fioffman. I don't know if that's correct or not. But okay. Start recovery. And when it, if it does come up, push F5. But wait till it comes up. It hasn't come up yet. Finish, yeah. We'll finish, yeah. <laughs> what is that? It's more like a scary here. 
it's the right it's program. Just blank. Yeah, it's the right program, but uh, mm -hmm. not having the content. There it is. Here we go. Okay. Push F5. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, well, that, that will do the same thing. Same as pushing F5. All right, VGA, maybe it'll work. Okay. There we go. This. <laughs> okay. Dr. Hooten of Stoke Boldington Yeoman to William Danielle, his father in law. And that's the record as, the, as it was extracted of Bletchley Yeoman. So I put it in red just so you can stand out. But his father in law, nobody knew who his father in law was. We knew he married Eleanor. That's as far as we ever got. This record helped point me in the right direction. And uh, 1607. And I put the meaning of <coughs> that word on the bottom and a couple other words in case anybody was interested. Yes. But this, I, I went back to the parish records once I had this for Bletchley, which is also in Buckinghamshire. Sure enough, William Daniel, the elder, had a daughter, Eleanor. Unfortunately, so did William Daniel, the younger. And they had them within about six years apart, but the older one had to be mine because the other one was just a little too young, we thought. And then I got William Daniel's will, and that confirmed it. So William Daniel, the younger, who this is, turned out to be my ancestor, and his marriage is actually there to Margaret Allen in, I think it's 1580 or something like that. The record actually exists. Another one for the Hootons. Robert Hooton, son and heir, so that generally means he's probably the eldest son of Belcher Hooton and Eleanor. There's Eleanor. And Sarah Page, one of the daughters of Elizabeth, Elizabeth Page. So this is a marriage settlement. Again, nobody knew Sarah's maiden name. There you go. That one I haven't been able to find in any other records except for this. Not that I've looked too hard because it's not actually my line. This one, from the father. Lewis Miles is selling land to William Abraham of Stoke Covington. The land is called Hancock Mead, 1651. Sons, Robert Abraham, Anne Abraham, and William, his eldest son. Hancock Mead again. So you can actually, even though there's nothing saying to William, you have a tentative connection through the land. And this is actually very helpful because Robert Abraham had a son, William, in which I had found in other records, but there's no baptism for him. So I did not have a lot of information on William, and now I know for sure he was the eldest son. I suspect, suspected he was because he was named after the grandfather, William. And, and Abraham, it also proved that my Robert Abraham married twice because Anne is the second, second wife. And I wasn't 100% sure that's how it worked out. This proves it. So these land records are just fabulous. Uh, this is another <clears throat> one of those things which we will <laughs> read anonymous. Belcher Hooten again. Daniel Hooten of Ravenstone. Yeoman, son of number one. Well, my ancestor's Daniel. There's about two other Daniel Hootens in the area at the same time. This proves my guy was the one of Ravenstone. Do this, does this prove that these people have money? A little, little bit, I guess. They, they own land. Actually, oh. yes. Unfortunately, probably on one of the things right back near the start, it tells you, no, it's the wills, I think, that, never mind. Uh, it, they had a little bit of money. They, they, they were definitely trading land back and forth, but they weren't super rich or anything. This is just they were yeomen or husbandmen. They had a little bit of land, and they could pass it on to their kids and that type of thing. Or that they had they didn't own the land per se, I don't think, but they had the rights to it. Or something along that line. Uh, what have we got? Oh, this one's kind of neat because it told me I was all screwed up on my Robert Hooten. Robert Hooten of Stoke Yeoman. There was a note on this record that there was no release of the, the land because Robert Hooten died twelve weeks after his marriage. His wife and child died within the year. And his brother Thomas got everything. So I had 
connected the wife whose name was Elizabeth and the daughter of Elizabeth. There, there's a parish register that says they were both buried in the same graves. And I would think it, they were right close to childbirth, somewhere right around that time. Long enough to maybe name her, name the baby, but that was it. And I had them connected to the wrong Robert because there was another Robert who also married Elizabeth. And so this straightened up the whole thing for me. And uh, I would have never know without that note. So all sorts of neat stuff in these land records. And like I say, there's also definitely this uh, type of thing on Northamptonshire. They have a website. And you can also go to the National Archives website and get some of these entries as well. It used to be called A2A or Archives to Archives, which was all the archives were linked together. And you could search them all right from the National Archives website. I think it's called something else now, which is too bad because A2A was really easy to remember. And you can get stuff from that um, as a PDF, so you don't have to wait for the post office. Well, so yeah, I, this this I just copied and pasted right off the. Uh, okay. It's the strictly thing, yeah, I got, strictly I copy got, and paste. I got uh, military records from A2A. Well, what, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's only two pounds fifty or something, and you just don't know. Yeah. Yes, A2A he does have some records you can purchase as well, and. Maybe these as well. I don't know, but I don't know. I think right. some of these they actually say you can only get it from Northamptonshire or Buckinghamshire or whatever. It depends what where the records are from. But they have the wills for was it Canterbury on on the two A as well. Except you can get them free off of Ancestry if you have an account. <laughs> okay, will extracts. This is the thing I was talking about here. Uh, Bucks Family History Society FHS. .org.uk. Click on County. There's other things down there, of course. Will searches. And it says this database is not yet complete. It currently contains details of over 200,000 names extracted from every will approved in the Archdeach Archdeaconry Court of Buckingham, 1680 to 1801, and Princess Riseboro Testators proved in the Archdeaconry. Court of Buckingham, 1500 to 1858. I guess that's, I don't know if that's where it is. Um, there is, you can read more, use the link, but the actual link to the person who's supposed to be looking it up is dead right now. I tested it again today. So you, you go in to the secretary or something, there's a gentleman named Tony that did all the lookups for me. And like I say, 17 pages for two pounds of Hooten entries, about 19 pages uh, for the Abrahams. I got, I think it was 40 pages for the Lee family. But the more pages I got, the less useful it was, believe it or not. The less pages there were, the, I had better luck with them. But for two pounds per surname, and, and that includes variants, it was super, just super. And to pay for it, you can do it right on their website. The, not all the drop down menus I showed you on the first bit where you hit, hit the other uh, connection. There's one you can go on to the history shop, and then there's a donation button there, and you just put in two pounds, boom, you're done, and they'll look it up. They actually ask you, they'll do the work first and let you know how many pages you're going to get, then you pay, and then he sends it. So you don't even, you know, if they don't have any on that surname, you wouldn't owe them anything. This isn't the example. This is the first one they got. Like I say, probably within the hour of getting this information, after going through the rest of the list, I had this baby on order. And uh, Mary Abram, John Hooten's son, George Hooten's son. So you can see already there's, it confused me at the start because we're back into a different surname. But there's my bunch, Robert Abram son, which should be son-in-law, Elizabeth Abram, wife of Robert. She's Elizabeth Luton originally. And then there's the kids. There's William. That's another proof that William actually existed. Daniel, Thomas, Isaac, and Elizabeth. And then he gets into more of the kids, things like that. And believe it or not, even with this list here, the gentleman missed, as I started to tell you before, two people on here. He missed daughter Mary, of Mary's daughter Mary. And he missed, uh, I think his name was Richard Stokes, or that might have been the father's name, but she had married a second time. Abram was actually her third 
husband. Hmm. And uh, there was another child, and I was able to track him down a bit through wills because he went to London. So, just fabulous. 1702, written 1699, across the top there. So, and it's in Weston Underwood, which is two parishes over from where I would have been looking otherwise. And to get the actual wills, bucks cc.gov.uk cc stands stands for county council and there's a few things on this website so there is it pays to play around in it a bit you have to click on view all services and then you click on culture and leisure that drops down this menu you click on center for buckingham study and that drops down this menu order a will hmm. This is the page, it says between 1483 and 1858, over 35,000 wills of ordinary people of Buckinghamshire. So it's not the rich people, it's the ordinary people, farmers, yeomen, probably if they had the grocers or, or blacksmiths, things like that. Anybody with a little bit of money or, or land or something wanted, they wanted to pass on. So, there's your find box. This is all free, by the way, up to this point. <laughs> Each will is 10 pounds, plus postage and packing, two pounds 50, up to five wills. So if you order them five at a time, it'll cost you about 90 bucks, and your wife will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not real demand, who would say? You still recommend it. Yeah, still recommend it. That's right. I only have to hide once in a while. And I have to go get the mail so she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can put in your last name. Now, it, it'll actually do uh, begins with. So for Abraham or Abram, uh, yes, this did pick up both. You can see even Abraham with an E. I just put in A B R A and it pulled it in. First name you could put Dan or D A N and it would pick up the rest of it. Between 1500 and 1702. Normally, I would have stopped at 1700, but I knew Mary <laughs> died in Wills in 1702. So there's the will I was talking about that I showed you the extract. Mary Abram of Weston Underwood. She's a widow. 1702 is when it was uh, approved. And this is, there was 19 in total. 10 per page there. So this is page two. But I'm ordering every will of Abraham for Stoke Bovington. I got two left to go. <laughs> Shh, don't tell Murray. <laughs> and uh, but I, I have been able to pull up others too. This is where I was able to find William Daniel the Younger's will, although he was the elder by that time because the other one had died. And uh, several other of my ancestors are on here as well. So there's I've got eleven wills so far and I need one another ten. And that some of them are speculative. William Daniel's parents, I believe, are John, and well, his father's John, and there's a will for John who died at the same time, so I've got to order that one. <laughs> Just not. <laughs> but that's what you get, and it's all done on online. If you want to order the will, you actually get a paper copy in the mail. These these ones are not electronic, so. Like I say, it takes it about three weeks or so to get a package of five. And Steve, are the copies fairly legible? They are very good, yes. In fact, one I think they even sent me a light and a dark version just to give me some contrast. Now, reading them, on the other hand, <laughs> some of them are a little difficult, and I've got one that's probably in the administration, and it's in Latin. And I'm sunk. Because hmm. Google can't translate some of the words, even though they're quite clear on the page. <laughs> so I gotta find somebody. Anybody here speak a lot of Latin <laughs> or read it? <laughs> you don't even speak. Yeah, yeah. I so we know about the names of Roman roads. And That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I took you know, two years of it. In high school, so that was high school. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to a little bit on local websites. This is just a quick one. This is 
Henslope and District Historical Society. You can see they've got say, something saying Village Records. Well, when you kick on it, then it drops down Church Records and Wills. And they have extracted from the Wills. They even done a transcription of the whole will. So you get a kind of an extract of the names. Then there's a transcription, and you can actually see the original copy of the will as well, but you can't copy it. But you can cop copy the, uh, ex the transcription. So this is just one location, but there are other websites out there who have similar things. This one, they've gone to a lot of trouble. All the church records, same with the church records. You All the different records are indexed. Then you can... Uh, Click on that, it'll take you to uh, a transcription of the information, and then down below you can actually see the page that it's on. If you want, don't trust what they did, you can double check it yourself. So, a lot of good things out there for Buckinghamshire. There's all the different earls if you're interested, or as you say, maybe we'll make a list of these and we'll uh, put them up on our website or something like that. Or if you got a camera like Bob, you can take a picture right now. <laughs> but there's there's Buckinghamshire. There's the hand slope, which was the last thing I showed you. There's Stoke Moldington, which is my main thing. There's Ravenstone, and there's Weston Underwood. So my main territory was there, but Mary ended up dying over Weston Underwood, where her last husband must have taken it. But a, a lot of the other ones all go around in this area here. Newport Pagnell has Hootons. And that one, I told you about William Daniel the Younger. And I can't see them here. But anyways, his wife came from some, there it is, Bletchley. There's Bletchley right there. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see, it's not actually that far, probably maybe 10 miles, 15 miles, maybe tops. But he didn't choose from the local parishes who did go a little bit further away. But overall, most of them all just came from that row right there. And then they ended up in this hole in here, which is actually Northamptonshire, because they went ended up in Pottersbury, which is, is there in the middle. And Whittle, Whittle, Whittington, I think it is. For Would uh, Bletchley be where Bletchley Park is, where they had all the deciphering going on during World War II? I think it is actually. I, I think I stumbled across yeah. something yeah. about that, but I, I gotta admit I don't know for sure, but I think it is. I think I did pick up on that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that is it, because there's a couple of miscellaneous for the National Archives website. And then North Amsterdam if you wanted the band records, that's their thing. So that's that. And we'll get Deb up here. And uh we'll, uh, Clear this off. Okay, you do that for a second. Oh, sorry. Okay. Maybe, 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 maybe not. It's okay. I can. Oh, okay. I got it. It's okay. Just, oh, you okay? He you zoomed in. <laughs> He's got a good camera. Go to 21. Go to 21. Oh, 21, you said? Sorry. She B. wants that list of the. the B. Okay. Website. You want it bigger? Start from the current slide. There we go. Okay, is that better? Bigger? Oops. No, we lost it. One. I want to put one. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> there. There. Right there. there. Okay. That's it. Come on closer. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to plug this in just in case the battery is okay. So do you need a um, browser to show yours? Yeah, I was just coming to bring them up on the internet. Yeah. Well, well there's, there's, uh, there are a few browsers. So on Dan, while you're there, maybe load, load the, uh, the which, browser. What's your favorite browser? Yeah. Yeah. I can be closed. That, that oh. particular one can be closed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably need your stick if you're going back you to probably that. All I'll have to look at it. And there must be a whole There's Firefox. Uh, it does look like this one. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we have... Oh, Firefox, might as well use it. I've got the URLs. Yeah, you got the URL okay. ready to go? Yeah. Okay, we just hit the plus. Uh, well, I guess we don't need to. No, we don't need to. Just, just okay. type it in. There. Already okay. there. All right. 
Okay, Deb's going to give us a couple of her favorites from Minnesota and immigration for Scotland, I believe it was. Thank you, Deb. And sorry, everybody. <laughs> just real quick. Okay. Just stumbled. <laughs> <laughs> He's tall. <laughs> Data? Hmm. .com. Yeah. We found this doing a Google search recently. And it is for uh, Minnesota. So I was looking for some Minnesota people. And this is what I found. So I'll just do a real quick. And I think that's all I did. Screen. Just press enter. <laughs> and I, that, those were my results. So I found uh, lots of, um, uh, not lots, but a few of the McNall family that I was looking for who had moved from Port Hope to Minnesota in the 1800s. So I just wanted just to let you people know that. Uh, is Dolby a place or is it a family? Or well, I didn't investigate <laughs> yeah. I, I have a friend named Dolby uh, from this area, but um, I don't know. It could be the family. I didn't really investigate. It was really quick. Then, of course, I meant to do this today, but I was working on DNA uh, problem or issue. Yeah. There's quite a few yeah. different records so, down the, so the left hand side of the there, page. There so are, I, I'm not it looks like it covers, it might even be a county, you never know. Well, it's it's it was all in Minnesota as, as I understood it. I'm really sorry I wasn't, I'm not to really fresh on it, but all I was looking for McNall in Minnesota and I was happy as the Dickens to find. There's a Dell. But I did get uh, some uh, information. Uh, Looks like someone's put a lot of notes in, too. Yes. And it's funny, I see uh, um, uh, there's a, a, a Wilbur. But that was really cool. That's my surname. So. Um, I just wanted to bring it up. I didn't go too much further than this, uh, but it's Minnesota. So if you've got anyone in Minnesota, you might be interested in uh, taking a closer look at the website, which I'll have to go back to. Okay? That's on the list. I have people that have got her. Do you? It must, well, be, must have been nice farmland. Yes, yes. Forests. <laughs> Yep. And maybe cheap too. Mm -hmm. the, the light and rush and stuff. Yeah, too. But there is a for I, you know what I can't I can't remember if I went any further, but no, I, I investigated if you like. I, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh good. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so uh, this one is uh, www dot abdn. I like to be more prepared, I apologize. Actually, when I sent it to Stephen, I thought he was going to be doing this. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> Didn't spell it out, so he didn't. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, UK. Sorry, I'm not used to this. 
immigration, immigration. Come on. Search. Oh. It's doing something. Is it? Oh, it is. Oh, yes. Yep, you're right. Okay, www.abdn.ac.uk. Oh. Is there a dot between AC and UK up there? What's that? Is there a dot between AC and UK? Yes. Yeah. And yes, I, I went back to do that. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so if I go. Since I can't connect to the server. Um, well, I don't use Firefox, so I, uh, I don't know. It shouldn't make any difference. There it is. There it is. Okay, so University of Aberdeen Scottish Immigration Database. And I just wanted to bring that uh, up just in case anyone was interested in that. Oh, passenger records. I think a lot of them are more recent, but right. there's certainly quite a few names in there. So if you want to find might not be your direct ancestor, but it might be your relatives. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what we are for time. I lost a bit of my phone. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So I, I, I won't do any more, but that is, um, that's a source if anyone's interested in that. And uh, at the University of Aberdeen. Free. Yeah, University of Aberdeen. Yeah. Looks free. Okay, so Thanks, good. next time I'll be more prepared. <laughs> <laughs> or, or should make sure I'm more prepared. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. So as long as we get the sites and we can play. That, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, Stacey. Okay, maybe I think probably now we'll take a, a quick 10 minute break. That way we can reset the computer back up to the, uh, the rest of the program. <laughs> And uh, don't forget the 50-50 draw with the two prizes at the back. Are we, how much money are we at? Do you have any clues at all? Or Eight dollars. Eight dollars each? Eight dollars each? That's the prize. Yes. Okay, so far we're up to eight, so not, not a big one, but we, the other prize is good too, so we have a choice. So we'll t take a ten minute break, and then uh, we'll have our little, a few announcements that we have, and then we'll do our quick program of the mini talk, which is, uh, oops. Um, re a refresher on using the Upper Canada land petitions, UCLPs, at the Library and Archives Canada. Yes. Sorry. And in Toronto, also, it occurred to me that I did bring back words somewhere that it recharges it. Well, you just have some things that work. Well, it could be too. Yeah. So I think there is. I will take a look. I will go back up. I might have just, you know, it's a bit easier to carry. Sure. Sure. But it is. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll get going again. Okay, there's an OGS webinar coming up. This coming Thursday at 7 p.m. Introduction to researching your East European ancestors. And its presenter is Eva. And I'm not even going to try the other half. We'll jinx the computer again. <laughs> Uh, just go to ogs.on.ca and the information should be there to follow up on everything to link to it. If you're a member, it will be in the members only section later on. And now we'll do a tiny bit of business only for a couple of minutes. Sheila, we will ask you to 
hopefully talk about black ink. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I have um, from June, July, and August, so the total withdrawals were $1,387.37. Uh, the deposits for the three months was $320.61, and our balance as of September the 3rd is $2,788.99. So, I mean, basically, we're just doing the rent and the internet, and not too much else. So we're, oh. we're good for now. <laughs> <laughs> we're still solving for another month. <laughs> okay, not that's good. Unlike Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, his allowance has been cut. <laughs> and B, we'd like to call upon you to talk about the mail. We've got a few, but not many. And this is all summer long. They all come in at the end of August because everybody is, I think, too busy during the summer. It's okay. Sorry. I can uh, stretch, it, stretch if I have to. <laughs> okay, the first one I have uh, came in on the 27th of August, and it's from a Sue Kilbank. Um, I'm researching the Inch family who lived in Hope Township. I'm trying to find the wills or probate documents. One in particular for William Henry Inch was documented on a land record I was looking for in the Port Hope archives. Um, I have, uh, it was probated on the 25th of October 1917 in the United Counties of Durham and Northumberland. I visited the service center in Coburg, but it's not listed in their ledger. It also indicates it is in the Durham County Book Number 3, 26th of October 1917, Number 1073. So she knows where the document is. What she needs is how to locate it. Uh, the next one came in on the 29th from uh, Linda Jackson, uh, Richmond, Richlands, New North Carolina. I need help researching my great-grandfather, George Frederick Jackson, born 26th of June, 1875, in Sarnia, Ontario, to parents William, born October 28, 1853, and Anne Marie Taylor Jackson. I know that George committed suicide in Durham, Ontario, and was hoping to find where George is buried or any other documentation linked to my ancestors. I have looked through so many databases that I'm at the point of giving up. Please and thank you. He actually died in Port Hope, Durham County. Oh, we got that far. We got that far, okay. It's a little different. Uh, the next one came in uh, September 2nd. Um, it says, can you tell me anything about this? And she had two documents. It's about the father Gill. And um, she says, uh, my mother has a father, my mother was a father Gill, and I have a letter she wrote about this man. Thanks, Donna Miller. Um, I don't know where it comes from, but um, it is, uh, I think that was the house that was across um, from, it's in the, um, oh, I think it's Dur in Dundas Street. Dundas Street, yeah. You think it's on Dundas Street? I, I thought I read it. Like the article's kind of hard to read. But I thought it, it looked Star. like the one that was way across the all the consumers. Near the steel factory. Near the steel factory. Yeah, steel factory. Steel factory. Yeah. Steel factory. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I wondered. It but, looked like it. But Just I thought like I read Dundas Street, so I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. It says it's a Whitby house, so. And Father Gill, she doesn't know a lot about him, so it's Charles Father Gill. Anybody's interested in those surnames, we can always pass the uh, letters on to you, or at least show them to you if you want to, to correspond with a cousin. Conference 2020, coming up. Uh, Hamilton Convention Center, June 5th to 7th, next year. Start planning now. And... Uh, if you go to the OGS website again, is once there's uh, information confirmed on everything, they'll start putting the information up on the website. So they have a, a logo, Vision 2020. Hers is kind of blurry. <laughs> Finding the past, moving into the future. And uh, as I say, there's the, the information will obtain. You can get to it through the OGS website.
probably our website will have a link as well once they get going. Upcoming meetings. Ruth Burkholder's coming 1st of October. Finding great grandma's grandchildren. How do you find people of your parents' generation? So in other words, when everybody starts to spread out, how do you track them down? In uh, 5th of November, we have Ted Barris. He's going to be talking about medical units from the Boer War up to the Korean War. We all know that's always a good talk. He, he's a wonderful speaker. December 3rd is our usual bring and brag. So start planning now. And also start baking those potluck treats. We need a double. Okay, the DNA Special Interest Group will be meeting the third Wednesday of this month and of every month. September 18th, 7 p.m. in our office, which is at the top of the stairs there that you came down to this, this room. Um, I'm not quite sure what's planned this month. I'm not even sure if Nancy's back or not. can't remember. So we'll wing it. But we, uh, we will do a little bit of our usual, hopefully a little bit of beginners, hopefully a little bit of advanced. We'll see what happens or we'll, we'll go from there. I can't remember the plan. <laughs> okay. Another little, uh, I think, a little short 10 minute presentation. We got time, do you think? <coughs> and I gotta switch. Oh. Sorry, I gotta switch the mode here. There's escape. There we are. Shrink this. <laughs> Ghosts. <laughs> Ancestors. No yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, using the Upper Canada land position, put in positions, petitions at the Library and Archives Canada website. They are free, they are wonderful sometimes, some are better than others of course, but uh, you won't know until you check them. This is a little bit of history on them, but basically they ranged mostly from 1783 to 1841. There is some for Lower Canada as well, and they also have a few other records mixed in, the sundries and, and things like that. But they can be military or civilian settlers, and sons and daughters of loyalists. Those are, those are the majority of the petitions there. How to find them? Well, the easiest way is to Google Library and Archives Canada, because that's a lot of typing for that link below. When you get there, LAC comes up. This is your choices. Click on Ancestors Search because that's the quickest way there. You can go the roundabout route by going through genealogy and family history, but this is quicker. And on the Ancestors Search page, you scroll down to the land section. You see land petitions of Upper Canada. Boom. And the gas basin. There, there's a couple of things there. There, there is uh, more than just that, but uh, this talks just strictly on the UCLPs. Now, what I recommend you do when you're going to do this, if you have Windows, I would right click on it and open it in a new tab. Oh, that didn't work. There we go. No. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I'm one step ahead. Okay, you get to this page. <laughs> and then uh, there's your land petitions of Upper Canada, blah, blah, blah. Search database, it says. Well, right click on that if you're using Windows and open it in a new tab because the uh, links to the microfilms is on the bottom of that last page. So if you, if you open two tabs, you can jump back and forth you won't have to keep going back and forward and this, that. It's a lot easier to, to just do it, uh, jumping from tab to tab. 
That's the bottom of the page, how to obtain, obtain copies. So, so, you've got your search database page. It's very easy. Uh, surname, given name, location. If you have an unusual name, just put in the last name. If you have a, something a little more common, you may have to define it a little more. I'll just put in here, as you can see, R and Joe. I'm actually looking for John Armstrong, but if there's any weird spellings or anything, and we, we ran into this into this with the, a gentleman named James Hamilton Wilson, who turned out he could, might have two L's in Wilson, or one, it could be Hamilton or Hamilton with a B. It's a lot easier to just put the start of each name in, and then it picks them all up. If you put in the location, that really narrows the field down, and if you apply from a different location, you'll miss them. But if you have 10,000 hits, then you can want a location. So we're going for John Armstrong. And I picked these three out specifically because A, they're all the same John Armstrong in different times. He started in York, 1816 petition. And then he's still in York in 1817 with another petition. And then he's in Cabin Township, Durham County, in 1825 with another petition. And uh, some of these other ones may have some connections, but mainly that's his main three, big three right there, the most informative ones. And uh, I'll show you why in a second here. But you can see the location would have narrowed it down I would, when I wanted Cabin Township, I would have only got the one there, not the two in York for him. But it turns out he's the same guy. So, I've circled the microfilm number, because that's the first thing you need. C1609. Back to that other uh, page that you've kept the tab for. You go down near the bottom of the page. Upper Canada Land Petitions. Microform digitized digitization. Click on that. Brings up your microfilm numbers. Just by coincidence, C1609 is the very first one. I did not plan that. On the bottom or at the top of the page, you can see there's actually 327 reels to choose from in as far as numbers go. This is the first 50. And to go to the next page, if you don't see the number you want here, you just click next. If you're farther along, once you get to the next page, there is a previous button to click as well. But that, in this instance, our, our guy was right there. So you click on that microfilm reel, up comes the first page. Um, sometimes this is on the bottom of it, sometimes it's not. It, this is your information right here from the petition. There is your uh, page ahead, or jump to the end of the end of the pages. In this case, 1,244 pages. I should be using that information. Steve, my understanding, I guess, just I really don't understand petition, but my understanding of the word would be you're getting free land. Not necessarily free, but you're applying for land. Yes, sometimes it's leased land that you're applying for. So you that somebody land. else might own. Uh, well, usually the crown or a church or some of some of those that you apply to lease that land and then. Do you eventually own it after leasing it for a while? I think it depends if they put it up for sale or not. Okay. I, I got to admit I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I would say sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends if they sell the land and, or if they keep it and just keep the rent coming in. We'll call it the one or the better. One. I would, I would say it's probably both choices. Okay, page number one out of 1,244. When I get when I bring up page one, I usually first thing I do is put in 100 there because you usually got to jump forward a certain amount, anyways. Uh, when you want to go back to the microfilm numbers again, the reels. This is your link right there. Again, forward one or forward to the end. And once we get past this, there will be the reverse as well. There's our real number. 
And this, you see the outland petitions, bundle A, 1796 1840, RG1, L3, volume one. Now, they probably have to go back. Well, that's not gonna work, figures. Okay, we had volume one, bundle A, and we want petition 28. Am I doing the wrong way? Yeah, sorry. That's it. A... Oh, I did put that page in again. <laughs> Fingers. Okay, so I, like I told you, I usually put in page 100 just to jump ahead a bit. Then you go to the very bottom of the page and look for this line here. Most of the times it's legible, the odd time it's not. So we were looking for bundle A. We're in bundle A. We're looking for volume 1. We're in volume 1. And by coincidence, we're on series number, or entry number 35. Uh, so we're actually, we wanted number 28, we're a little ahead, so we've got to go back from 100. But normally the, the numbers are uh, put on the top of the pages. Quite often it's all over on the other side there. There we go. Not usually on the left-hand side, it's usually on the right-hand side. Of course, the next one will probably be the liar. There we go, there's number 28. No, it's over there on the right hand side. So this is actually the one we were looking for. We just had to go back X number of pages to find it. And we said this was for John Armstrong. So there we are, John Armstrong. It happens to be for several people. Uh, I can't remember what his name is. John D Date, Joseph Thurp, Thurp, maybe? But the R is in the wrong spot. Third, John Stewart, George Hall, William uh, Morrison, David Huggins, George Stewart, and James Brown. And the interesting part about this one, why I chose it, and that's not working, all originally from the county of Cavan in Ireland, and have lately moved to this place from New York with part of their families. That part number of them follow, or of their fellow subjects, will come in the town of the, of the next summer from New York. Rotten English, but. So half of them came up the first year, the other half are coming the next year when they get settled, I guess. For the purpose of settling finally in this part of His Majesty's Dominions that uh, being de very desirous of joining a compact settlement. So they all want to join together. They're all from County Cabin, Ireland. They all want to be together here in Ontario. I gather you've read a lot of this kind of handwriting. Yeah. You this is that. actually quite, quite nice compared to some of those rules. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Uh, and I did refresh myself this morning. <laughs> yeah, before I came. Okay. Oh, and no, that's the right way. Okay, so the next one, the 1817 petition for John Armstrong. Something seems out of place here. Anyways, volume six we're looking for now. Bundle A, volume six, 1811 to 1819 time period now. And uh, page 13, or number 13, because it's not just one page, they can be multiple pages here. So this one's the petition of John Armstrong, now of York, laborer, humbly showeth that your petitioner was born in the parish of Ashfield, mm -hmm. in the county of Cavan in Ireland, That's good. which place he left in the year 1815 for the purpose of settling in this part of His Majesty's blah, blah, blah. So beautiful information in here. Not all of them are this great or this specific, but for this guy, you luck out. And, and here's his, I think probably his oath, yeah, oath of Allegiance. So John Armstrong, late of the County of Cavan in Ireland, now of York, in said district laborer, 27th of March, 1817. So that was his oath of allegiance. And that's page 13A. So what they do with the pages, 
you start with page 13, but then there's 13A, 13B, 13C, etc. And when they get to 13Z, they go 13AA. Because some of the things have a lot of pages. And then this is the, just the cover here. It just shows you proof he went for land as a settler. It was received 27th of March, 1817. And he was granted 100 acres, 8th of April, 1817. And it's entered in land book J, page 170. And if you go into the land books, then you can kind of track the land down to see what he got. But this is what was ultimately discovered from here. Native of Ashfield, County Cavan, came in 1815 with neighbors and relatives, who moved in 1816 to Canada, and received the east half of Lot 18, Possession 3, in Cavan Township. He had a wife and seven children with him in 1825. He had a son, John, who was born in May 1798, and who was killed by the fall of a tree before 1822. And son, Archibald, born in 1801. Son, Joseph, son, Thomas, and then there's other possible children. I haven't totally sorted them all out, but John left a will, so I will get them sooner or later, I hope. <clears throat> and he's not even my guy. <laughs> but I, I had to have it once I found he was from Nashville. This is my connection to the Orr family. They're trying to, because it turns out there's a lot of county cabin people in Cabin Township, that's where my Orrs settled. I want to see if they were relatives because I have no clue in Ireland where they came from. So, but that, that's what you type of stuff you can find, actually find from petitions. Not only were this good, but you never know. And that is it. And I will go back to the other one. Okay. <laughs> F5 is starting. Well, actually, I want to try and go down. Yeah. Oh, this, no, this is actually where we want to be. So F5 should? Start the whole thing. Oh, start at the start? Yeah. But you can, skip <laughs> it. you can skip through it quickly. You know. Okay. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Not as quick as you think. It <laughs> seems to be stuck. <laughs> I know it, I had a little trouble. So maybe it's because there's extra want, visuals or something. Do you want to press escape and then go to the right one? Well, there was something at the bottom of the page lighting up on my copy. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, oh, I don't know if I have to wait till that disappears or what. Using space bar or arrows? Arrows. Yeah, it should work. Just it seems the ones with the more pictures on them, I guess, are mm -hmm. just confusing the next year. Almost there. And we don't have time for a brick wall. Oh, so that's all. Okay, there's our contact information. If you need anything, we have a Facebook group, we have a blog. Questions can be sent to durham.ogs.on.ca and same information can be found on our website, durham at or durham.ogs.on.ca. And remember, next meeting is Finding Great Grandma's Grandchildren. It'll be held here in the church. And also remember on the third and fourth Friday of each month from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. or by appointment, we are open with our office upstairs. If you want to come in, check out our library. Uh, Deb and I are usually here to try and offer advice and uh, guidance and anything else you might need. Luck. <laughs> and uh, we'll provide that too. We yeah, are. Until we try. <laughs> and I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Oh no, no, well, it's, it's not on here, but. We do have to do a draw, don't we? Oh, yes. No, we'll do it next month. <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when the pot is bigger, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so.